there's no more perfect place to do Ariadne of Naxos than Gleinborn because it all takes place in a manor house where the very cultured landowner is producing and presenting theater. And of course, that's exactly what we have here at Gleinborn. It's really a story about the clash between high art and low art. The high art is embodied by a couple of opera singers and a composer and a music master that are at this rich man's home to perform a very serious piece based on the story of Ariadne of Naxos. At the same house, the same night, there is a troupe of Commedia del Arte players, and these are comedians. The problem becomes that things are running late as they are wont to do and the very snooty major domo announces to them that they will have to perform their two totally disparate plays simultaneously. So you've got this clash, this literally a collision of two disparate styles. <laughs> And also, another thing about this piece that I think is very special is what we see in the prologue is Strauss's world. He's showing us his backstage world, um, where he grew up. His father was a horn player in the Munich Opera Orchestra. Um, and he's showing us the characters that he deals with every day, the prima donna and the leading tenor who are arguing about uh, cuts and costumes and wigs and the composer, idealistic young man, and a dancing master who's a very sort of let's go on with the show kind of a character, and the Commedia troupe. And what he's showing us of the backstage world of the theater is a really insider view, which is quite delightful. And uh, it's very familiar if you're in the theater, you recognize all these types, but if you're not, it's kind of a really uh, delicious peak back, you know, it's like you drawing back the curtain and looking at what's going on backstage. Yeah.